for more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to News Click and People's Dispatch. Today we're very pleased to be joined by Giles Unapakon. Giles was a professor at Chulalongkorn University in Thailand before he faced a Lee's Majesty charge and fled the country in 2009. He was charged, it was said, because of his book, A Coup for the Rich, which analyzed in detail the 2006 coup in Thailand. Giles, welcome, welcome to People's Dispatch and News Click. Thank you for inviting me. Well, you know, Giles, we're in the middle of this major uprising in Thailand. Um, Thailand, of course, has a history of coups uh, that goes back to the Palace Revolt 1912, the 2014 coup, and so on. Um, give us a brief sense of the role of the military and the monarchy in Thailand. I think this is a useful introduction for people who don't follow Thailand closely. Give us a sense of the role of the military and monarchy in Thailand. And of course, in all this, where is the United States of America? Well, before I talk about the history of the uh, monarchy and the military, um, you said that Thailand has a history of many coups. But at the same time, Thailand has a history of mass uprisings against, the, against military dictatorship. And um, those mass uprisings were successful on two separate occasions, despite the violence used by the military against unarmed protesters. So really, we should, we should see the long-term picture as a struggle between the people at the top, the military, um, the royalists, the conservatives, and the people um, at the bottom, the ordinary working people, um, farmers, and so on. So, so I would I would put it in that context. Now, the um, <clears throat> the monarchy is actually, um, if we start with, uh, for for example, nation building in Thailand, um, King Tula Longkorn or Rama the Fifth. Um, staged a revolution against the feudal system. It's basically a bourgeois revolution from above. Um, this kind of thing happened in, in uh, countries where um, the revolutions had, had occurred late. For example, um, a very similar thing happened in Japan with the Meiji Restoration. So the king abolished um, the Thai feudal system in, in the 1870s in response to the incursion of colonialism, the incursion of British imperialism and, and French imperialism and, and created the nation state of Thailand. But at the same time, he made himself into an absolute monarchy. But this situation was unstable and only lasted about 60 years because in 1932, in the midst of the um, world economic crisis, there was a revolution which overthrew the absolute monarchy. And it was uh, led by a coalition of left-wing politicians and um, anti-royal um, military men. Um, the problem is that um, these two factions that overthrew the the, military, the absolute monarchy um, weren't um, weren't looking for the, the for similar outcomes. The the leftist left nationalist politicians wanted a kind of socialist society. Um, the military people wanted um, something to the right of this, and and so. Um, it resulted in 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 the number of um, toing and froing between the military and and the civilian politicians. But it was the um, Cold War, really, that um, established the the role of of the military dictatorships in Thailand, and they were supported by the United States. And it is 
during this period that the uh, military sort of um, brought back the monarchy, if you like. The monarchy hadn't been totally abolished, but they they started to to um, promote the monarchy um, as a symbol of conservatism, of a symbol of anti-communism, and so on. And 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 ever since then, um, the Thai monarchy has been <coughs> promoted like this, mainly by the military, but also by um, capitalist politicians, right-wing politicians, and so on. The current protesters, the majority of them, actually believe, well, I would say the leadership, um, actually believe that the, the present king, Wachia Longkorn, is trying to establish an absolute monarchy. Um, I disagree with this. I think that the monarchy in Thailand has always been um, a tool of the military ever since um, the Cold War period. Um, king Pumipon, the present king's father, who died recently, was weak and uh, unable to actually... Uh, he, he was cowardly and, and, and just went with the flow, really. He, he enjoyed being made and promoted into some kind of godlike figure uh, by, the, by the military, but he didn't really have any power in himself. And the present king, um, well, he has a history of, of, of failing exams, of being totally um, uninterested in social affairs. Um, is, one could say he behaves a bit like a, a sociopath because of the way he treats women and so on. I mean, he's, he's got a harem in, in Germany where he spends most of his time. He, he treats his consorts who he falls out with them in, in a barbaric way. Uh, some of them are just put in prison and so on. But, you know, the, the monarchy itself doesn't, can't actually control the military. It's the other way around. It's the military that use the monarchy. Um, it's the conservative elites that use the monarchy. Now, in order to understand this, and you, you can see pictures of top military generals, um, including the present military dictator in Thailand, despite the fact he, he um, claims to have been elected, although the elections were, were false elections. You can see pictures of them groveling on the ground in front of the present king, almost as though they are, you know, servants of this king. Now, I think you have to almost be a, be a Marxist to to actually understand what's going on. It's a play act. Um, it's basically the military and the elites foster this view that the monarchy, the king, is some all-powerful godlike figure. And the reason they do that is to put the fear of this godlike figure in the minds of ordinary people. And they have been successful um, over the years in doing this. And of course, monarchies are very symbolic, not just in Thailand, but in, even in places like Britain and, and Sweden and other places, because they represent the idea that it's natural, supposedly natural, for some people to be born low and some people to be born high, and you need to know your place in society. Now, it, it's taken to an extreme version in Thailand, um, but, you know, Marxists have, have talked about the, the, the idea of, of alienation. If, if you are weak, if we are weak, if we don't feel confident and powerful, um, we tend to believe all the crap that the ruling class um, put, put forward in society. And those beliefs can be shaken through struggle. And that's something like a, that a number of Marxists have talked about. And you're seeing this happening in Thailand as we speak, because um, the the royal the the 
the view, the fear of, of royalty, the fear of which is imposed also by um, les majesty laws and people being prosecuted, but but also, you know, it, it's it was it was a mainstream view in society in the heads of many many millions of people but this has been shaken it's been shaken by um the struggles that, that have broken out of the last few months it's also been shaken by the behavior the reality of of the of the present king and so we've seen we've seen um unprecedented criticism in public of of the present king and the way he he um is trying to amass wealth um, through changing the constitution and the way he spends his time in in Germany um, um, with his harem and so on and, and 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 his total disregard for 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 ordinary people and and that has um, meant that the present demonstrations um, have got uh, one of their key demands is for the um, reform of the monarchy. Um, to allow people to criticize the monarchy openly and to to reduce the the um, the the wealth of the monarchy and 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 to um, control his his behavior now this is something that um, is unprecedented as I've said but it's also something that the military are not going to not going to allow very easily unless you know there are strong uh, powers within um, social powers within the demonstration to to actually press the military um, or push the military out, overthrow the military, because the military depend on this image of the the royal family and and so on in order to legitimise their their authoritarian rule. So so. In summary, I would say that the, if you're looking at the, the military and the monarchy, the military is, uh, is the main power base. They have the weapons, they have the, peop the, the armed um, forces and so on. And the monarchy um, is a bit like the fairy on top of a Christmas tree. Um, it's symbolic, but very strongly symbolic. So that you know, it, it was symbolic enough to 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 get people to to actually feel fear or love or whatever or respect for the monarchy in the past. Well, you know, it's you've given a very dazzling portrayal of the structure of the problem. The current prime minister, as you said, Prayut, uh, uh, he is himself, after all, was an army general. Uh, led the crackdown against the red shirts uh, about a decade ago, uh, comes to power in the coup of 2014 and essentially is a coup prime minister. I mean, it's, as you said, this, you know, the elections are not possible in this sort of uh, situation. We have a good understanding, therefore, who's in power. This is the army in power. This particular army officer has demonstrated already in his own by his own hand, that he's willing to use the most brutal force to crack down on people as he did against the red shirts. What is the character of the protests? Could you characterize the protests a little bit, or at least the social force that's developing? Is it capable of becoming strong enough to provide a sustained challenge to this structure, which, as you said, is not the monarchy? Monarchy is the mask of the military the capitalists and so on. What is, how should we understand uh, this social force that has emerged so dramatically on the streets? Well, um, I think um, that it's useful to, to, to use a Marxist analysis of social movements. And so um, one of the key Marxist analyses of social movements like these pro-democracy movement in Thailand is that it, it doesn't just appear out of nowhere. It's a bit like a tree with many, many branches. And part of those, this tree was the, the mass movements that overthrew the military in the past. And people build on movements in the past. So 
people, the present move, movement has been building on the red shirts, it's been building on the 1932 revolution, it's been building on the, the uh, uprisings in, in the, the 1970s. It's been building on a spontaneous uh, protest that took place when the present um, dictator took power in the coup in 2014. But up till now, up till say August, the protests and, the, and so on have been small. But what's happened is that they, the, the present movement has been fueled and led by young people. Basically, this generation have said, well, we've had enough. We've had enough of the way the world is being run or our country or society is being run. And um, we're not afraid. That's, that's what's new about this, is that the young people are not afraid. If you, if you talk to the, the red shirts who were put down brutally 10 years ago, they will still feel slightly afraid. They carry the baggage of being shot down in the streets and so on these young people you know this that was 10 years ago for them for them that's like a lifetime away so they're very they're very determined they're very um courageous and they're prepared to to go out on the street they're prepared not to to listen to people who say oh you know take it easy and so on and and they're prepared to criticize the monarchy so we've been seeing um, these protests, which have been led by um, young people, a lot of the leaders are, are university students, but we've also seen mass movements um, erupting among secondary school students, um, you know, uh, coming to demonstrations, berating the Minister of, in, of Education, calling him a lackey of the, the um, military junta, um, defying their their teachers and so on, and prominent among these young students are women. Women have come to the fore in 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 leading this, and the older generation are, are gaining courage from from the young people and, and are are joining in the protest. So, since <clears throat> October, there have been a number of uh, demonstrations in Bangkok, which have numbered. Uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of people, and and that's and that's unprecedented um, for this decade. It's interesting that after the um, after the Brayut coup in 2014, um, students who were prepared to protest protested in small numbers, and they were saying, "Well, you know, we don't need large numbers of people on the streets because of." social media well that idea has been completely turned on its head people certainly use social media but they understand that you've actually got to to build through face-to-face -face relationships with people and actually get masses of people onto the streets and that's what 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 is happening but the thing is that the the movement is just a junction because as you say you 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 know where is the power to to actually overthrow the military and i think that if you look at thai history if you look at international history the overthrow of uh, dictatorships depends on um more than just turning out onto the street it depends on making the uh, country ungovernable and um this can happen in a number of ways. You could have um, rioting, but that involves a lot of loss of life as well, because the the security forces would be, would be prepared to to shoot down people. But the other alternative is to to have strikes, um, workers' strikes, and this is possible in Thailand um, already. Um, there have been large gatherings of of workers um in working class areas in, in in industrial areas along the eastern seaboard or north of bangkok but the but gatherings on the streets are not enough we need work stoppages 
we saw the power of the work stoppages that built up um, in the Egyptian revolution or in um, Algeria and other places in Sudan and so on. And, and I think that the, what is needed is um, that the Thai working class be mobilized. And, and when we're talking about the working class, we're not just talking about factory workers. We're talking about um, people, white collar workers, um, doctors, um, people who work in the health service, people who um, work in banks. Um, and, and other places. So, so that is the kind of power I think that is necessary. Unfortunately, um, because the left in Thailand is, is quite weak, um, the voices calling for for building of strikes or activists who who go out to visit um, workers in their locations are, are quite weak. But uh, just, just one more thing before I let you go, which is that, you know, in the context of, you gave the example of Egypt. Um, after all, Mubarak left when the military decided to let Mubarak go. And when uh, Sisi, you know, decided that the Morsi government of the Muslim Brotherhood was no longer going to be tolerated, they did a coup against the Morsi government. In other words, there has to be fissures within the military to allow for the advance of the project of the people on the street. What evidence is available that within the Thai military, uh, there might be significant fissures that allow history to advance? It looks like there are no fissures and therefore history may not advance. What are your quick thoughts about that? Well, in order to, to get the ruling class to to start to crack apart and argue with each other, you need a strong movement from below. And the two go hand in hand. Um, and so, you know, if you have a strong movement, the people at the top start wondering, well, you know, the guy in charge probably um, isn't making things any better. We'll remove him in order to, to save the situation. That, that, that's basically what, what they always do. Um, at the moment, I don't see um, that happening in Thailand. I don't see the fishes, although um, the military in Thailand are factionalized. They, they you know, they, 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 they're rivals within within the military. But you know, they're not they're not about to 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 support the 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 project that the the mass movement in in Thailand is putting forward because that would actually uh, put them all out of power. Well, we are going to watch this very closely, Giles. Um, that was excellent. Giles Unpakorn, thank you for joining us at News Click and People's Dispatch. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah,